Hello and welcome to this Indava gathering. It's great that you can be with us. I'm here at uh, the home of John Cottrell, our CEO, to ask him a few questions to get his reflections on 2020 and hopes for 2021. And there'll be plenty of time for you to ask your questions too. So let's go inside and meet up with John. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, very good. And action. <laughs> so John, thanks so much for inviting us into your home uh, for, this, uh, for this conversation. Thanks for coming around. Can I just start by saying amazing socks, great choice. <laughs> and, uh, and here we are in your, in your living room and uh, sat next to this wonderful Christmas tree. Can you maybe explain for us what's the colourful toucan about? So this is, this is the little Christmas tree that normally goes in the hall. Normally you put an angel or a star on top of a Christmas tree, but there was one year, and this is probably about 20 years ago, where um, we couldn't find an angel or a star. And I somewhat jokingly um, put this toucan at the top of the tree. Uh, and the kids, kids loved it. So, so it's now a cultural family tradition that, that the toucan goes at the top I of the see. tree. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so... Um, so a few questions then. So let's begin here. Thinking back to, uh, to this time last year, last Christmas, what were you looking forward to most in 2020? So 2020 was um, and is um, still the 20th anniversary of the establishment of Indava, um, the 8th of, 8th of February. We had planned a whole load of um, uh, material just to celebrate that, to recognise that uh, we'd been going 20 years to have a look back at all the technology that had come through. Um, but, you know, that whole storyline was very quickly overtaken by this global pandemic as it, as it came through. Uh, I remember I was, I was in the, um, the US initially um, doing some, some of our base camps over there, talking to some investors. And as I was traveling around the US, the states were closing behind me, went down to Uruguay and then Argentina, it seemed as I left the country, they, um, they were, went into lockdown. It felt like the virus was chasing me across the world. Um, there was a good news though, as we went into, uh, for us as a family, as we went into uh, lockdown, my kids who are all grown up and living in London now, they all came home to um, spend lockdown with us. So we ended up with three months with our three kids back at home with us, uh, which frankly was something you know, uh, with the kids living at home with you, I thought that had gone. Yeah. <laughs> and it was really nice to have them back. So we, we had a little bit of a silver lining to, um, to this pandemic. Um, of course, in parallel with all of that, Indava was being hit by this typhoon of a pandemic. Um, clients were unsure what they wanted to do. They were closing some projects down. Um, and it was, it was, it was quite uh, a pressured time um, thinking through how how we protect our people and protect our business. Mm. Right. Yeah. Just picking up on that that um, that point you make there about protecting our people. I can imagine that um, knowing you, that was a. Uh, I'm, I'm not surprised by that decision. You know, the, the declaration of of uh, protecting people, protecting roles um, throughout this time. But I'm just interested. Was that an easy decision to come to? Was it something you, you made quickly with your team or was there a process? Just thinking of the some of those external pressures. Clients were unsure what was happening to their business. Uh, they were, um, there was absolute um, chaos in terms of uh, decision making. I, I, I've never seen anything like it in terms of the numbers of projects that were uh, being ramped down, uh, other ones that were uh, being kicked off um, and, and in that context there was very much a sense of what what is going to happen is are we going to face some sort of cataclysmic scenario um, in terms of a drop-off in in revenues and activity um, so that so there was this question of so what, what do we protect do we protect our, our people or do we do we protect the, the business um, from that and you know, that's, that's where as a leader, it's, it's nice to have things like our core purpose in place, the reason we exist as a, as a business. We should focus on protecting our people 
Um, and, that, and that's why we, we put out the message that, um, that we were going to protect jobs above uh, all other things. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we gave that message not just internally to our people, but we made sure our, our investors understood that that was our focus, that our clients understood and so on. So it was, there were very few other companies who were doing that. Uh, most other companies were uh, trimming back, obviously, quietly, uh, rather than making a big noise about it. But there were very few who were absolutely standing there and saying, we are going to stand by our people. Um, you know, we went through a very quick transition of uh, people uh, doing their work at, at home. We, we went from something like 5% of people um, working at home on average um, in any one day to something like 99%, and it happened over a period of, of two or three days. Um, so thanks to all of you guys for uh, making that happen. One of the good things for Indava, of course, is that most of our business has been allied to industries in areas where, the, where there's strong growth and our exposure to the ones that are falling off um, is actually a relatively small part of our um, portfolio. Uh, so we were able to see a good step up. Um, but of course, with all that chaos going on, communication to staff of what was going on was absolutely critical so that people could actually get a, that bigger perspective of, of what was happening to us as a business. John, in a, in a recent article, um, that, that was published, I, I read it on, on LinkedIn, um, you were asked this, this question, um, how can a, a CEO grow a company's advantage and differen differentiate itself at a time of international crisis or, or recession? And you gave this answer, you said, um, the role of the CEO is to point the organisation towards areas of innate strength. So in this time of pandemic, in times of global crisis, where do you feel the Indava innate strengths lie? Uh, yeah, so our, our innate strengths lie in, in our core purpose, the, what drives our existence as a business, uh, you know, which is that we exist to create an environment and a culture that breeds success by, number one, caring for our customers as an individual, and uh, number two, enabling our people to be the best that they can be. Um, so that focus on uh, people um, is our innate strength. And you see that in the way in which our multidisciplinary teams perform, the way in which people uh, come together to envisage new technology-based product uh, with and for our clients, um, and then to execute on it with uh, superb um, software um, that enables uh, that product to scale and be successful in a market. But a lot of this um, requires leadership and I'm interested in in your reflections as you step back and think of 2020 um, how the role of leadership has shifted during this time um, what have you discovered about your own leadership first of all in this period and and what are some of the things that you've seen or discovered across the the leadership across the teams in Indava yeah I mean it, you know these times of crisis um, are often great times for actually um, seeing leadership brought to life, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the first, the first challenge was to face the brutal facts and recognise what was going on in the world um, and how we needed to um, face up to those facts and, and respond to and, and not stick our heads in the sand, which is often a, a challenge in leadership. And then, you know, the, the, and, and having been open and honest and said what we were going to do, to then really follow through and, and keep the promises that uh, we made in that position. And, I, you know, I think the challenge for all Indava leaders is essentially the same for, you know, it, it's not just a whole organisation thing. If you're working with an individual team, uh, leading them, um, the same qualities are called for as you look after your people, direct them through change. It may not, it may not be a pandemic level issue, but we all hit pressures um, and difficult moments in our projects. And if leaders do those things, face the brutal facts, be open and honest, and then, and then follow through on the promises, it makes a big difference at a team level as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Thinking forwards then about, um, about the future of work 2021 uh, and beyond for Indava uh, how do you see or do you see any um, change 
in the work that we do across the organization or indeed how we deliver uh, to our clients. I'm just interested in your, your views on that around the future of work. Yeah, so obviously the biggest realization, and this is not just an Indava thing, but the whole world has woken up to is the fact that um, we can do remote working and mm -hmm. people can work from home and do it very, very effectively. Um, I mean, that was visible uh, for us in Indava because we, because we were uh, measuring our productivity. Now that was incredibly helpful to be able to go to clients and say, this is working. We're able to build on that experience now and, ex and expect to offer a more flexible setup in, in future. You know, I, I absolutely do believe there's a role for the office um, as well as a role for working from home. And, and to me, it's a question about enabling people to uh, work where they can do it most effectively. You are driving the future of work conversation in Indava and, and you know, we want to get this set up so that as we come out of this pandemic, um, we, we go into that future straight away. What are your thoughts and where has, have you and the team got to? So, so I, think, I think the starting point for this has to be uh, the, the, the culture of Indava. You know, we, we, we believe we have something special um, in the way in which we operate and the things we do. Uh, and, and so the future of work has to be built on that foundation, that whatever we do, we will um, it, enable our culture to be prevalent. You know, you talked about the core purpose earlier on. How do we ensure we further that? You know, the, the work that we do is the vehicle for us to deliver that core purpose. And so I think we've got a, built on that core purpose a number of beliefs that we've come to, and this is through lots of conversations across the organization, beliefs around, you know, number one, we believe that um, first and foremost, the, the capabilities and skills and the way that we put teams together, as you mentioned, is, is core for our future. We think there will be a, a place for Indava locations. Yeah. Offices will be really important for teams to come together. Yeah. Places where collaboration can happen, um, where communities can gather and share experiences together. Just switching gears slightly, uh, still thinking about the pandemic, but then now thinking about our customers and our industry. How has COVID-19 pushed essential change in business and how have we positioned ourselves to respond to that change? So I, I mean one of the really exciting areas for us has been um, the acceleration in the digital space. So we've put in place uh, the industry vertical teams all around understanding how technology can impact clients in specific industries that yes. are going through this um, through this change. Um, our delivery locations are in good shape. We need to make sure we get the future of work right as people yep. um, get beyond um, this pandemic. Uh, we're, we're recruiting at full speed. And I know that's very Absolutely. much on your agenda to uh, make that happen. John, thanks so much for having us in your home and uh, sharing those thoughts with us. Just before we, we move to Q&A, are there any final words that you want to give to all Indarvans out there watching? Sure. Um, so um, firstly, a massive, massive thank you to uh, all of you, all of us, for uh, persevering through this incredibly tough year. Um, so much change, uh, so many challenges, and I really, really appreciate uh, that everyone stepped up and uh, made a difference to us as a business and, and to our clients. Um, but also, you know, as we're entering this uh, holiday period, uh, and I include Thanksgiving that we've just been through, um, I just want to uh, wish you all um, a very, very happy Christmas, happy holidays. Um, and I hope um, that you get a bit of a break either during this holiday period or, or early into the new year. And then great success for uh, 2021. I hope it's uh, and expect that it's going to be a very different year to 2020.